Shane Carwin is one of the hardest hitters in MMA history. The American fighter quickly rose up the heavyweight rankings by finishing all of his opponents in the first round by KO, TKO, or submission. But it was his knockout power that was really on display once he entered the UFC as he finished his first four opponents by strikes in round one. And in the process, he became the UFC interim heavyweight champion. Although he was very close to unifying the belt, he was unable to get the job done and after picking up another defeat, he called it a career. So how good was Shane Carwin actually? Hey guys, it's Keon, and today I'm going to be talking about Shane Carwin. This was a highly requested one, and I think a lot of that has to do with Shane being an absolute beast back in the day. Before Francis Ngannou was regarded as the heaviest hitter in MMA, Shane was that guy. And this gave him a lot of momentum as he finished his first 12 opponents in the first round. It really seemed like he was going to become the next best heavyweight. But as fast as his rise was, so was his fall. So in this video, we're going to take a look at Shane's MMA career to really understand how good he was. But first, shout out to the undisputed members of my patreon they get the extra perk of a shout out before each video but even the intro members get early access and video to the kion kumara podcast and as always the money goes to charity now let's get to it shane began his mma career on october 14th 2005 at the age of 30. prior to his debut he was an ncaa division ii wrestler he also had a degree in mechanical engineering and environmental technology as he was starting his mma career he was also pursuing a career in engineering his first fight was at wec 17 against Carlton Jones. Shane immediately went in for the clinch and this led to a takedown. He began to throw ground and pound and eventually he transitioned to mount. This led to more shots from above that forced Carlton to tap. After picking up a 22 second submission win, Shane fought Jay McCown. Shane immediately secured a takedown and began to connect with ground and pound. Credit to Jay for eating all these shots and not going out. But Shane went on to lock up a rear naked choke that forced a tap. After this, Shane picked up 5 more wins which were all first round finishes. And in the process, he became the ring of fire heavyweight champion. This 8-0 record led to him signing with the UFC, so he made his debut at UFC 84 against Christian Wellish. The two traded on the feet to start things off, but Shane was landing the harder shots and eventually he connected with a right hand that sent Christian down. This led to more punches on the ground which forced referee Eve Levine to step in. At UFC 89, Shane fought Neil Wayne. After clinching up, the two traded on the feet and it was Neil who was finding more success, but Shane was able to secure a takedown and while on the ground, he threw shots from above before transitioning to mount. After some more shots from above, referee Dan Mergliata stepped in. At UFC 96, Shane fought Gabriel Gonzaga. Shane rushed in but got caught by punches that rocked him. This led to a takedown by Gabriel, but Shane was able to get to the cage and use it to get back up. Gabriel went on to rush in with punches of his own, but this time, he got caught by a right hand that dropped him. Shane threw some ground and pound before Dan Mergliata stepped in. This win gave Shane a number one contender fight against Cain Velasquez, but the UFC decided to scrap that fight and proceeded to have Shane fight for the title, which is a shame because that would have been an awesome matchup. But the fight for the belt against champion Brock Lesnar was cancelled a couple of times, and this was due to Brock pulling out as he was going through some serious health issues. So the UFC decided to set up an interim title fight between Shane and former UFC heavyweight champion Frank Mir at UFC 111. The two felt each other out on the feet to start things off. Then Shane went in for the clinch and began to connect with short but very powerful punches. But the action stalled for a bit, so Dan Mergley separated the two. Frank rushed in with punches and also ate a few before the two clinched up again. And those short but powerful punches from Shane continued to connect. This included multiple uppercuts that dropped Frank. Shane began to throw ground and pound and once Frank got flattened out, the punches put him to sleep, making Shane the interim heavyweight champion. So he was set to unify the belt at UFC 116 against champion Brock Lesnar. And he looked very close to doing that early on by denying the takedown and rushing in with punches. Brock got hurt and after a big knee and more punches, he went down. This led to a barrage of punches from Shane and the fight looked moments away from being stopped. But Brock survived and after two minutes on his back, he got up and held Shane on the cage until the end of the round. Meaning that this was the first time Shane was going into the second round. And the worst part was that he was exhausted from trying to finish the fight in the first. So it was easy for Brock to take him down and lock up an arm triangle choke that forced a tap. Handing Shane his first defeat. He was supposed to fight Roy Nelson after this, but he had to pull out due to neck pain that required surgery. Once he recovered, he was set to fight John Olav Inamo, but instead, he replaced an ill Brock Lesnar and fought Junior Dos Santos. If you remember, this fight was promoted as one that would for sure end in a finish. Instead, the two went all three rounds, which was a first for Shane. He tried to bring the action down throughout the fight, but Junior defended well. While on the feet, Shane was getting picked apart and looked really close to getting finished near the end of round one. But he 
survived and by the end, Junior won by unanimous decision. Following this defeat, Shane underwent back surgery. When he came back, he became a coach on the 16th season of the Ultimate Fighter opposite Ultimate Fighter Season 10 winner, Roy Nelson. A season notorious for this. <laughs> The two coaches were set to fight at the finale, but Shane pulled out due to injury. And due to the constant injuries, he decided to call it a career on May 7th, 2013. He did attempt to come back in 2016 by signing with Japanese MMA promotion, Ryzen, but he withdrew from a matchup due to injury and never went on to book another fight with them. Shane was also in talks with Bellator, but nothing came into fruition. He did fight in an exhibition boxing match against skateboarder Jason Ellis, who was much smaller, but Shane was only allowed to fight with his left hand. Regardless, he won the fight by knockout. So after going 12-2 and in a career that saw him become the UFC interim heavyweight champion and the Ring of Fire heavyweight champion, how good was Shane Carwin actually? The power that he possessed in his hands was incredible, which is why I understand the comparisons with him and Francis Ngannou, two men who can knock out their opponents in the most violent fashion. But they are two very different types of knockout artists. I will admit that Francis is the more technical striker, which leads to more finishes on the feet for him. And although Shane was able to drop fighters while on the feet, most of his striking occurred on the ground. And a lot of that has to do with him having the ability to generate so much power in such short distances. Plus, he has some massive fists. His short punches in the clinch inflict so much damage. And his ground and pound is vicious, especially when he transitions to the mount, postures up, and begins to rain down the shots. Plus, he has some solid wrestling and did well in bringing the fight down when he needed to. And his chin is very durable as he has taken some big shots but was still able to survive from them. Overall, he he was an all-around force, which led to 12 first-round finishes and a lot of hype surrounding him. It really seemed like he'd be the next best heavyweight, especially after the beatdown he put on the prime Frank Mir. And with Brock coming back from serious health issues, things did not look good for him against Shane. And that showed early on in their fight as Brock was close to being finished. But he survived and made it to round 2, which was something Shane was not used to and it showed. It was clear that he did not have the cardio to go past round 1, which is understandable considering all of his wins ended in the first first. Plus, Shane had to carry all that muscle. That definitely doesn't fare well for long fights. But aside from his cardio issues, Shane also got injured a lot. Injuries which required multiple surgeries. And with Shane being 36 by the time he fought Dos Santos, age was also not on his side. Which is a shame because had he started earlier, I definitely could have seen him become an undisputed champion. He even had the look of a heavyweight champion. Regardless, when he was winning, he was a walking highlight reel. And outside of the cage, he seems very respectful and soft-spoken. Spoken. Similar to Stipe Miocic. Yes, Shane's fall from the top was fast, but his rise was definitely unforgettable. That's why it would give his MMA career an 8.5 out of 10. His name is one that doesn't normally get brought up in today's MMA. But once people start to discuss the most powerful hitters in the history of the sport, Shane Carwin is a name that will always come up. My name is Keon, and this is my take on Shane Carwin. Do you agree, disagree, or have something else to add? please put in the comments down below because I love to read it. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel for more content like this. But that's all I have for now, so I'll see you in my next one.